Well, as I said, outside in the cold, um, we're excited because we got a new season of Noisemakers and Noisebox. We're in a new home here at Knitting Factory Brooklyn, and we're with a new, well, it's not entirely new band, certainly a band that more and more and more people are talking about all the time. We're paint. Nice to meet you guys, and thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Wait, thank first you. of all, we'd actually, yeah, really like to thank you oh. for existing and doing what you do here. Oh, I think thanks so much. Um, it's special. And well, it's special. Needed. <laughs> It's special for us to talk to you guys, and, and um, I said outside that I hope that your being here from the West Coast will bring a little bit of warmth, because it's mm -hmm. been, a lot of people here feel like it's been a long winter, so um, we're ready for the, the sunshine and, and all Whoa, that good us. stuff. So, I'm, at least musically, musically you'll do that. So how are things, I know you're out on the road with Akron family right now. That's been a few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Things are going well with them? Mm. It's yeah, going amazing. It's actually uh -huh. like the best time ever. They're really, really, really good dudes. Yeah, you're playing support, but do you find that people know the songs? The, the EP's been out for six months now, I guess, almost, right? Yeah, definitely more than our tour in October, Yeah, where there was like six people in Baton Rouge, you know? Well, that was amazing, though. That was, I couldn't believe that. We went on our first United States tour, and it didn't matter what city we were in, there was at least four or five people that had heard of us, and that... We were really excited. Yeah, it was the most amazing thing, because you don't understand, you know, when you've only been playing around your city, how your music can spread without you ever taking it there. And it, it was just more than I could even ask for, that everywhere there was at least a, a handful. Right. And then I've, I've expressed that to people who are seasoned musicians and they're like that's how it, that's how it happens you do that once and then you go back and there's 10 and then you go back and maybe there's 30 hopefully and then and maybe one day you're playing a stadium or something well I you know I, I think I, I guess it all depends on <clears throat> who you're talking to but I mean I you know people I know have known Billy Holiday for months they've known stars or, or elephants but I, I would imagine that people are discovering your music every night playing yeah. with, with these guys that's right? happening a lot as people yeah. are are responding really well who've never heard us. One yeah. thing that's really nice is that we have it. It's there's a lot of people. There's like an equal amount of people to see both shows, which is pretty. Yeah, exciting. that's great. And they, they come early. They watch us. They stay. It's, yeah, it's and nice. the Akron family really brings sunshine. If you talk uh -huh. about yeah. that, they right. bring such a warm, open group of people who are just open to any experience musically. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a pretension in their dancing, and so it's been like <laughs> a really, it's like right. a little gypsy hippie festival right. yeah like de deadhead follower <laughs> vibe you know where yeah. they just want to yeah. go and watch these Fishers. amazing musicians noodle away and get funky well you guys have little jammy impulses among you too right yeah I mean, even if people don't For necessarily sure. get that from the records a little bit maybe but yeah not a lot from the that yeah. ep we definitely do that in practices and when we hang out and warm ups and sound checks you know that's a big part of how we interact you know? right. and how yeah. we write songs as well. yeah we're finishing off the tour with three or four of our own shows, and then we go back to LA. Europe in May for two weeks. We so did CMJ um, in October, and that you was- did indeed, and a lot of people are saying <laughs> that was a big moment for the band. I mean, I, do you feel that way? I mean, people point to that as sort of like some good press coming out of that, as well as the rough trade. Did, did the rough trade deal really have, was it a direct result? No, it, it was yeah. already happening. It was pending. Oh, wow. <clears throat> that was probably that some smart business. Just like, like oh, yeah. rough trade friend them after CMJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, we were but already, CMJ did we were go already well. buddies. Yeah, it was yeah. really fun. Yeah. We hadn't played in New York before, so. That was exciting. We all really love it here, feel connected to it. How did the rough trade deal come about? Were there a number of labels interested? And mm. We had a couple things going on, um, but it, it's funny, you know, one of, the, one of the guys wrote us from, you know, on our MySpace initially. And then there's a guy who lives in Portland, Scott, um, who does A&R, who came and saw us play like this tiny little bar. It was this like, summer? Yeah, this summer. And then and it then just happened that way. He, we were actually speaking to another label, and, and they, Scott, the guy, the A&R guy in Portland, was pretty urgent about telling Jeff Travis that this should happen. and. And getting and letting us know that they were urgent about it, so that we didn't sign with this other label. Thank God, because Rough Trade is, it's the best that, in my opinion. So you guys had been in Portland working on the on the. No, no we were just playing. Playing. Yeah, we just we did our own homemade tour for a week and a half with a, another band that mm -hmm. Jen has played with before, mm -hmm. um, called Moon Rats, and 
we all just drove up the coast for a couple weeks. Because you have you have been working on the full length there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. We, were we that was to, that was oh, the yeah. original plan. Yeah. We were going to go and record there for two months, and then that sort of that fell through. So we stayed in LA and have been doing that for the last month. What's so? What's the status of that? Is it how far along? We have two more weeks. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mixing wow. and a little bit of overdub. Uh huh. Oh, so it's that close. Yeah, it's really yeah. exciting. Because I, I heard summer release now at this point. Yeah, August. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, the EP came out, I'm Animal Vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, how did that, is that, those are guys you knew from L.A. or? We didn't really know, Paul. I mean, it's a small little neighborhood, you know, that we mm -hmm. were in. We were doing a residency at this bar, Bordello. I think that's where we first met him. And playing with bands that were already on his label. So mm -hmm. just, it was a nice, it was just like a really nice stepping stone for us to put something out. And he's really passionate about the bands he puts out. Was, we self-released it first, though. We put it yeah. out for like a good, what was it, six months or something? Mm -hmm. Six mm -hmm. months to eight months. Yeah. And then he picked it up and it was kind of like, okay, yeah. Cool. A re-release with an mm -hmm. added track. Yeah. So it was first released at the beginning of last year? Mm -hmm. It was in February, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we had our EP release in February or March, I don't remember. Yeah, we had it in Amoeba. Yeah. Basically, you could only get it at Amoeba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it did really well there. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I've heard that, yeah. So, yeah. at least it from We would bring it in. We'd, like, <laughs> bring it in, you know, ourselves. <laughs> like, let me make Yeah, get the money and, like, ha pass out 20 bucks each. Movie Spots.